Morley, do you plan on staying in your room all day? I can't keep begging you. I'm tired of shouting for you to come and eat. I don't want to eat your food. And don't talk to me after what you did. You are an ungrateful person. I'm trying to help you here. You're about to turn 18. It's a big deal. Many people will try to take advantage of you. I'm sorry for slapping you. I wanted to get some sense into you. You want me to sign over my inheritance. That's not fair, and it shouldn't be on your mind. How dare you be so ungrateful after all I've done for you, Orly? You slapped me and could have hurt me. The money is mine, not yours. Did you pretend to be a good mom to get the money? If you disrespect me in my house, you have no right to stay here. So you're kicking me out before I can take care of myself? Yes, you think you're a grown woman, so act like one. Pack your things and leave tonight. I don't care where you go. But, Mum, you've heard about the disappearances happening lately. Open the door and give me what I want. I don't want to ask again. No, it's my money. Did you really think I couldn't break down the door and toss you out like the vermin you've become? You're utterly useless to me. Mom, please reconsider. It's midnight, and I'm penniless. Where am I supposed to go? Should have pondered that before choosing to defy me, acting so ungrateful. Consider the years of toil I've endured, and you don't wish to compensate me. I said I could part with some money, not all of it. You're getting three million dollars, and you expect me to settle for a measly two hundred dollars. Dad left you with substantial funds to care for me and bought this house. Cry me a river. Call the cops if you must. It won't faze me. Leave my driveway. I need to sleep. Astonishing. You're not the mother I thought I knew, and I know who's responsible for this transformation in you. Oh, come on. Don't speak ill of him. You should be grateful. He's been so helpful around the house. He lacks a stable job, and you're constantly giving him money. Why let him manipulate you like this, Mom? I'm disheartened by the person you're becoming. I'm the mother. I'm the one who should be saying that. By the way, your birthday party is off. Says who? Are you forgetting that Isabella's mom arranged everything? Even if it was your money, she orchestrated and signed for it all. Well, then enjoy it without me because we're finished. Hey, are you all right? Did you miss a second period? I had to consult with a lawyer about my situation. My mom is contesting the will. Why? She's so resentful. It's not like you won't support her if you have the money. She thinks I'm too young to handle all that money. Perhaps, but I have a mentor willing to teach me about investing. What I don't want is for that money to fall into his hands. That guy is a real creep. Either way, thank you for letting me stay at your place. You were the only one who responded. Any time, bestie. You know I've got your back. We'll be back before the fourth period. Hey, I wanted to tell you this before anyone else did. What's up? The other girls don't want to sit with us at lunch. I think Corbin's daughter spilled the beans. They're saying you're too destitute to sit with them. Classic Laura. I'm back now. I saved us a table. I refused to sit with those phony girls. Did you know they ignored the texts and calls you sent for help? What? It's unbelievable. Thank you for standing by me. Of course I will. You're a true friend. I've known you for only two years, but your loyalty surpasses those I've known for years. Loyalty isn't measured by how long you've known someone. Absolutely right. See you soon. Hey, I informed your mom that you were at the library. Did you manage to secure the items? Indeed I did. The party is going to be fantastic. How can you muster the nerve to throw a celebration while your mom is unwell? Is she really sick? I couldn't care less. Does she even acknowledge my existence? She does. Ease up on your mom. She's done a lot for you. She not only slapped me, but hurled insults when I tried to assert myself. Is that what motherhood entails? So where do you plan to stay? You can't crash at friends' places indefinitely. Surely you realize that. I'll manage. I don't need the both of you. Why not set everything aside and attend to your mom? 
She didn't even give birth to me. Why should I be responsible for her? You claim to love her, so handle it on your own. My birthday party is approaching. You're insufferable. We'll ensure you get none of that money. Remember, you're not 18 yet. Do as you please. I'm not intimidated. You should be. You'll end up with nothing, and perhaps that'll teach you to respect your elders. You mean nothing to me. Just a freeloader contributing nothing to the household. There you have it. No party for you. I meticulously curated the perfect mix for the school's best TJ after going through significant trouble. My bestie had to sneak out of town to get it, and now you've cancelled my party, citing a noise violation? I was attempting to keep quiet until after graduation, but you've pushed me. I'll visit Mom tomorrow. You're not welcome. How can I be certain you won't unleash your temper on her and cause harm? Because I'm not deranged. Your daughter, Laura, is more likely to resort to that. Refrain from discussing my daughter. Concentrate on her, not me, then. I refuse to believe a single word you uttered. If you bring such absurdity into my abode again, I won't hesitate to evict you. It seems you derive pleasure from being degraded. Well, I'm speaking the truth. You can't lay a claim to my inheritance. I secured it a year ago. I'm well aware of your age. You didn't turn 18 last year. You didn't give birth to me. And your involvement in my education was minimal. The reality is, I had to repeat a grade. You did what? I didn't succeed in the subject you pushed me to take, so I repeated the grade and changed classes to ensure I passed. I kept it from you because I didn't want to disappoint you. Moreover, you got your boyfriend, who strikes me as dubious. So, as soon as I turned eighteen, I claimed my inheritance and bought a house. I feared you two would marry and cast me aside. How could you deceive me like that? You clearly didn't come from my womb. It must be your mother's ordinary genes that influenced you. Don't speak ill of my mother. Why shouldn't I? Your mother was unhinged. Your father was relieved when she passed away. He was devastated. Don't defame my mom. Then... I entered his life and brought about change. But my mother wasn't a bad person. She didn't deserve to die. How can you say such things about her? Well, she evidently raised you improperly. You're exceedingly ungrateful, despite all I've done for you. You've genuinely surprised me. You're free to leave and enjoy your new house, but I'll never lift a finger for you again. Fine, as long as we're clear. I'll retrieve all of my belongings then. Hey, I want to go out and get some food after school. I feel like doing some window shopping at the mall. You don't seem like wanting to go anywhere these days. Aren't you supposed to be furnishing your house? Yeah, but I've been lazy and busy with school. You should probably stay at home, too. Oh, why would I do that? I just don't feel safe in this town anymore. Sometimes I feel like someone is watching me. I'm constantly paranoid that someone will find out that I have the money and threaten me. So, you think your mother would snitch? That wouldn't help her in any way. I think you're paranoid because of the amount of coffee you drink. You must be getting better. Come on, don't insult my favorite drink. I don't know. I feel like someone is watching me. It's all in your head, my dear. You'll be fine. Come with me. I saw this little shop that sells antique furniture. Okay, only because you're buying lunch. Fair enough. Isabella, someone broke into my new house. What the hell? I just got there. I was speaking to contractors about redoing some of the windows. When I got there, the place was broken into and trashed. Everything was broken. Now I have to restart. I cannot move in when I want to. Don't worry about where to stay. My parents love having you here. But do you think the attack was personal? Let me send you pictures. This was personal, and I think I know who did it. You do know that I can press charges against you. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you've done to my house. And what proof do you have? I don't have security cameras, but guess what I do have? You dropped a hammer, the one with your initials. Guess you're getting sloppy. I said nothing because I was staying with Mom and you. I used to be scared of you. But I knew that you were shady. I know the kinds of people you hang out with. 
That was a low blow, and I'm going to make sure you pay for this. Look, you can go and cry about this to someone else, but I don't give a damn. Check for fingerprints. You won't find a thing. How can you be so cruel? I have worked so hard on this house. Oh my god, it was you having me followed. It has to be. You're going to jail for this, you creep. Oh, please. You have no proof of anything, little girl. Don't mess with me. If anything happens to me, you're going to be the number one suspect. Incidentally, he's been released. Never try that again. Why accuse him of such actions against your house? So, you're involved in this? Darling, why would I harm you? I'm not that heartless. I'm not crazy, Mom. You're the one who did it. By the way, to bail him out, I had to sell some of your trophies. You sold my trophies. You're a monster and I hate you. If you can't handle the heat, stay out of the kitchen. That man is not good for you. He'll destroy you. Be careful. I won't take romantic advice from you. You're housebreak and shows you're too young for responsibility. Stop being a brat and I can help. I don't want your help. What's happening? Why did we get an eviction letter? Please don't do this. Leave my house, sell everything, but you won't live here with that criminal. You took care of me, but that doesn't give you the right to steal. I panicked. I took care of you for so long. It was hard to let go. You stole my money. He followed me, Mom. How creepy is that? You had him arrested on false charges. Can't he come back and we live as a happy family? It's too late. I can't live with a violent man waiting to hurt you. How can you say that? He's been good to us. He wants your money. You don't know what you're talking about. Fine. I'll do a background search on him to prove he isn't good. If he has a criminal record, they must know I'm right. I doubt he does. I hope your investigation is complete. Yes, I found some shady things, but he wouldn't hurt me. Tell me, so we can get rid of him. He's been good to me. I can't just do that to him. I'm sure he can explain. Mom, you're scaring me. Please leave that house. We can forget everything and move into my house far away from him. Not with his kid. You're pregnant? Yes, I am. He knows and wants to get married. I've wanted to marry him for so long. I love him. I gave you a chance, but you chose him. You're still getting evicted. If anything happens to me, do not interfere. I got myself into this. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> Something happened to my mom. What happened? She found out about my stepdad and hasn't contacted me. It's bad. What do you mean by that? What if he finds out I'm snooping and hurts her? Do you think he's the creeper kidnapping girls? No, he wouldn't, would he? He's lucky creepy. Contact him and find out. My mom is pregnant, making it worse. You have to find her. No one's at the house. I should go to the cops. Don't be hasty. Calling the cops might worsen things. You're right. I don't need this. I have an exam tomorrow, the last one. I'm so tired. I can't wait for school to be over. Same here. After repeating a year, I'm over it. <coughs> Where are you? You were right. He's not to be trusted. He gave me the phone to tell you he kidnapped me. If you don't give him the money by tomorrow, he'll end my life. What? He wouldn't do that. You're carrying his child. Check your emails. He did that to you. Oh, my God. I know you wouldn't want to save me. After all, I haven't been a good mom. I told you, but you didn't listen. Please help me. I really think he's going to kill me. I'm sorry for all I did. Where is my mom? You evicted us, did you not? She isn't answering our calls. Where is she? You don't give me what I want, and there will be nothing left of her. You have two days. Come alone and I'll send you the location. My dear, thank you so much for helping me. I wish I hadn't dragged you into this. You think? I want nothing to do with you after this. I warned you about him, but you didn't listen. How much money did you give him? Two million in cash. I think he's out of town already. 
Did he hurt the baby? No, I'm not hurt. Wow, I didn't know you cared about me like that. I thought you would never want to see me again and would allow him to hurt me. I don't care about you. I did this for the baby, and I couldn't have your death on my conscience. I did this merely because I'm a good person, not because I care about you. You must come over for dinner so we can celebrate my freedom. No, I don't want to see you. I lost my money because of you. Please, I have to thank you in some way. Fine, I'll show up, but with Isabella. I don't trust you. We'll need to discuss how to move forward. Mom, I hope you like the champagne Isabella's mom gave me for you. Oh my, why is she so sweet? I'll keep it for after I give birth. There's a lot to celebrate, like the crook being caught. What? What? Yes, I gave them marked bills and some fake ones. Got the idea from a series Isabella and I like watching. Oh my god, why would you do something so dangerous? What if he comes back for us? He won't come back, nor will he hurt you. What makes you say that? Because you two staged a kidnapping. How do you know that? Did you really think I believed you? Still up for that champagne? It might be the last one for a while. I did nothing wrong, and you have no proof. I just heard from the neighbor that my mom has been taken away by the cops for questioning. I'm still baffled. How did you know they were tricking you? I always had bad vibes about that man, so I asked her to look into him. I also installed cameras in the treehouse overlooking the house without them knowing. He's creepy. I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, instead, my mom, Corbin, and Laura, his daughter, packed bags and left the house. All three seemed happy. I used to find my friend's app to track Laura to a lodge. Damn, girl! Enid spilled the details about which lodge, and that's how I knew they were tricking me. So you figured out they were tricking you? Yes, but I needed to teach them a lesson and get that man out of my life. The things I found out about him are chilling. How chilling? Maybe I'll tell you on Halloween. So you gave him fake bills and waited for him to get caught? Yes, and the great part is he's a previous offender, which is not good for his parole. That's good and all, but what about your mom's baby? The law will deal with that. She chose to participate in a crime, so she needs to be prepared to do the time. I have newfound respect for you. You outsmarted two grown people. I knew if I didn't do something, they'd hurt me for the money, so I made sure they got what they deserved. I'm proud of you for standing up for yourself while acing your exams. I'm glad to. Now let's have that perfect holiday. I just finished furnishing my house. Let's go for a party. Corbin got about 15 years in prison with parole after 10 years because his daughter turned against him. My stepmom did give birth, but her parents took the baby. She struggled to find a job in town for a while because no one trusted her, so she left. I, on the other hand, went to college after my trip with Isabella and am having the time of my life. Regarding step-parents, having access to stepkids' funds, it depends on the individual circumstances, legal agreements, and the relationship dynamic. In many cases, financial matters involving stepchildren are typically handled through legal channels such as custody agreements and wills to ensure fair and transparent arrangement. Where are you, Mom? I just got home, and there's no one here. Is it all right if I make pasta? I know you all like it a lot, but I couldn't ignore the laundry. I was already running late for a client appointment. You could have rescheduled. It's not like you're making millions, Alice. Don't bother cooking. We're going out to eat. We're celebrating. What are we celebrating, Mom? If you took the time to spend with the family instead of being on your computer all day, you would know that your brother got a promotion. Really? That's wonderful. Yes, he viewed a house a few days ago, and we love it. Why are we moving out when our house is perfectly fine at the moment? Because your brother just got a promotion and a significant pay increase. I won't have to do any part-time work anymore. Do you think we should wait until he has worked in that position for a while before deciding to move? Besides, it'll take days to move. You should have told me so, that I could have organized it for you. There's no need for that. You're not moving in with us. What the hell? Yes, you're not moving in with us. You're staying 
The house is big enough for you. The rest of us are upgrading. You're leaving me alone. What about Ariel? Is she going with you too? Yes, of course. She's coming with us because she has potential, unlike you. Your hardworking brother has made new friends among the rich and elite in this town. But Lily, I don't want to stay alone. You're my family. You're so naive. It's like you're not even my child. Let me be straightforward. Our family is now in a different class. We cannot have someone like you tarnishing our image. This is all happening so quickly. Why would you do that? Because you're not that successful. You work on a commission basis and barely make enough to cover rent every month. But hey, you should thank us because now you won't have to pay rent. Take the house and anything in it as a parting gift. So you were ashamed of me? Have you seen how you dress? Even your seventeen-year-old sister Ariel dresses better than you. You dress like a peasant. You have no style and no class, so we cannot let you ruin our image before we even become part of this community. It's like you're not even my child. If you feel that way, fine. I want to let you know that I have just made a big acquisition, and things are looking up for me. But it's fine. What do you mean by that, girl? You don't even have to know. About three weeks later, hey, how are you? I'm good, and you? I'm good. I just wanted to know if you wanted to come for dinner at the house. I haven't seen you guys in a while. I know Lily is not talking to me, but I don't want to fight with her. Why do you keep on trying, Alice? Why would you say that? Take a hint. Okay, I will take a hint. Ever heard of "Do not burn your bridges"? What do you mean by that? I mean that nothing is as it seems, Charlie. Enjoy your new posh house while it lasts. Oh, really? So you're telling me that you're going to miraculously make it in what ten years, and then we're going to be begging you to help us? That only happens in fairy tales. So wake up. Wow, I never knew you would be this cruel. I knew that you were a jerk, but this is another level. You know that you're only the favorite because you're making money, right? You do remember that this is the same woman who raised us. Just wait until she messes up your life like she messed up her own. Shut up. What? You don't want to be reminded of the truth that our mom is a flake. You know it's great that you're the one who was stuck with her. At least she will not mess with my success. What success? If you're successful, then I'm a fool. You're just sour because you weren't living in a house with a balcony and a view, heated water in all the rooms. It's perfect. I revoke my invitation for dinner. You're not one of us, so stop trying. Yeah, I'm not one of you, and we don't owe each other favors. A couple of days later, well, this is strange. This is a number that our agent gave us. Are you the assistant of the owner of the house? No, I am the owner of the house. This prank is not funny. You didn't read the fine print when you rented out the house, did you? No way. The thing is, you never asked me questions about what I did exactly. You looked down on me, and I let you. I did what my father always told me to do: play the fool to fool the fool. No, it does not make sense. These houses are so expensive. Was this the huge deal that you signed? Let me explain it to you like you're a child. I work for a company that takes rundown houses and turns them into luxury homes. This house you're living in used to be rubble. It was destroyed in a fire, and the owner was selling the land for a very low price. So I bought it. Oh, really? With what? My savings. I've been saving up for years so that I could buy myself a house. When did this happen? Not so long ago. I had to give up a lot of luxuries in my life to make sure that I could restore the house, and I did. My agent told me that she had gotten tenants, so I approved everything. Never checked or could even imagine that you guys were the ones who moved into the house. That is, of course, until a few days later. I was going to shut up and take the money until your son pissed me off a couple of days ago. He told me that I could never make it. He had no idea that I made it. I just did not boast like he does. I put my head down and I work. You increase the rent by ten. How can you do that without notice? I did. I don't think that this is legal. Yes, it is. Have you checked the kind of area that you stay in? Besides, I had the right to increase the rent. You guys were overusing the water and electricity for people who want to act classy. But we are your family. How could you charge us rent? 
You should have told me when you got the house so that we could move in. I am glad that I did not. I'm not like your puppy, Charlie, who is so desperate for your approval that he would let go of his self-respect. I need proof of this. This is a prank. You're a very bad daughter. I am your mother. I am your family. You said it yourself. It's all business. A day later. Did you receive the letter from my lawyer? We want our deposit, and we want to move out. I'm sorry, but you cannot. The lease is for six months, so you have to stay. Otherwise, you can pay me the penalty at fifty, and you can move out. I'm not giving you money for anything. Here, I was thinking that you're Mr. Hotshot Executive. What a joke you are! You are not going to get away with this. Oh, and we want you out of the house, since you want to be rich. Now you can afford your own house. I'm sorry, but you can't do that. Why can I not do that? I own this house just as much as Ariel does. So I have every right to be staying here. It won't take me long to find a loophole, and you'll be out like the trash that you are. I don't think calling your landlady trash is the right move right now. Make sure your rent is on time. A couple of days later. Where are you? I went out with friends. No way! You don't have any friends. I do. Well, I made friends after you guys moved out. Turns out that I have a lot of free time once I have no one badgering me to take care of them every two minutes. I had no idea how much you guys took up my time until you left. I need some stuff from the garage. Oh, that stuff! It's in storage. I cleaned out the garage for my art studio. Since when did you even like art? I don't know, bro. Maybe I've been finding myself because I don't have the pressure of my family. Anyway, I don't care. Just give me the details of the storage locker. Later that week. Hey, girl. I hope you got home safe. It was so nice to meet you. It's funny that Charlie never mentioned you. He said you only had one sister. Oh, you must have mentioned it in passing. But it was nice to meet you. It's a pity that he has never brought you to the house to meet us. We would like to meet you. Well, he says that he loves me, but I don't know. With what my friend says, I find it hard to know if he's genuine or not. Oh dear, I'm so sorry about that. He has always been like that as a child, but I'm sure that there is nothing he's hiding from you. He must be waiting for the right time. Yeah, I hope that we get engaged soon. I mean, does it matter that my father is the CEO of the company that my brother works for? Yeah, never mind. I had too many mimosas, and now I'm talking a lot. No, girl, you can trust me. Like he was always complaining about the fact he's not making enough money. So I got my dad to give him a promotion. Now I'm just waiting for him to propose. I'm sure that he will soon. A couple of days later, hey, do you know that Charlie has a girlfriend? What, my Charlie? There's no way he has a girlfriend. He knows that I approve of all the girls that he sees. I cannot have ugly grandkids. If only you could see his girlfriend. She's the epitome of gorgeous. I saw the two of them ring shopping. I was so excited for you and thought to congratulate you on the new member of the family. I don't know why he's keeping things from me, but it's fine. I'm sure that she's a good enough girl. And you, why do you feel the need to gossip? Are you not preoccupied with your endless partying? I won't tolerate you meddling with my life like that. Oh, really? I'm not going to poke around your life when you're embarrassing yourself. Since when have you dated women? I did not raise you like that. I'm glad you've cut me off from your life. So you cannot be disappointed in me twice. Focus on your son, who is keeping secrets from you. What is her name? I don't have to tell you. If you reveal her name to me, I will give you the gold necklace your grandmother left me. I thought you were going to give it to Ariel. It looks better with your neck. Her name is Aurora. Black hair and brown eyes. Good. You don't need to do much else. A day later. Congratulations. I heard they're going to be the main speaker at the company gala. Why do you even care about that? Well, someone I work with was invited, and I saw that you were on the guest list. I guess I just want to say congratulations. Why can I not say that to my brother? You're going to say that this is another thing that I stole from you? It's very funny that you would mention that. Now I don't think that you had to step over me to get it this time. I can read between the lines. You don't think that I deserve it. So your internal thoughts are haunting you. You don't need to validate them. So. Who is the ring going to? What do you mean? You took the ring from the storage. Who is the girl? Since when have we 
ever discussed one another's love lives. Nothing much. Just interested in knowing who that blonde girl you have been sneaking around with is. Who told you about Dora? See, I've been getting to know a lot of people, and people talk, especially when they're inebriated. I met Dora a few weeks back, and what a coincidence it was that she's dating my very own brother, Charlie. I hope that you two do not cheat in relationships like you do in real life. What are you talking about? How about you and Lily blew my inheritance so that you could study overseas when you could have studied in this country and paid normal fees? So then I had to work so hard to get a scholarship, and I couldn't even do what I wanted to do. Stop blaming me for your failure. I never had anything easy while you always had it handed to you. I don't find it fair. Well, life's about to be even more fair for me. I'm about to, let's just say, get a new position. What do you mean? Keep your eye on the papers. I'm sky high now. Alice and Lily. So, did you see her? Yes, she is gorgeous. Oh, and thank you so much for letting me know about her. You approved of her, didn't you? Yes, I did. But what about what he said about mixing? I think they'll make beautiful biracial babies. The relationship is new. I don't think they're thinking of having babies yet. Oh, just cut it out. I spoke to Charlie about the girl. She is a step closer to one day being the CEO of the company. But your views? I can smile on her face as long as we're elevated. I see you want me to, to go find her, go to the launch, and make a scene. I would have probably told her to stay away from my son, but it was not easy. Once I found out that her dad was a CEO, so I told my son to marry her. He proposed? He's going to... No, he should not, Lily. You cannot let him do this. Your plan is foiled. He's getting married to the CEO's daughter and promoting his job. Of course. He always gets everything, even when he has to lie and cheat his way up to the top. You must stop enabling him. What do you mean by that? You act like you don't see his true character, but you do. Your son is not a good person and is not ready for marriage. Quit speaking nonsense and focus on your own life. You said that you have been enjoying your life since we left you, right? Well, then go back to that and stop trying to ruin your brother's life. What has he ever done to you? What has he not done? The two of you stole my inheritance money. You two crushed my dreams. Oh, come on. So you're still uncomfortable about that? You know what? I hope the girl realizes that he is not a genuine person and runs. A couple of days later... I assume that you've seen the announcement of my engagement. You're lying to the poor girl, Charlie. Have you no shame? She loves you so much. As you would know, since you've taken a great interest in my life. I like Aurora. She's done a lot for me and now she'll be my wife. You don't love her. You're using her. How would you know that? By the way, I'm getting married within the month. You're welcome to attend the wedding, as long as you don't cause a scene. Fine. I'll be there. That is, if there even is a wedding. What are you trying to say? Maybe she'll realize who you are before then. If you tell her anything about Dora, I will not have any mercy on you. I'll forget that we're even siblings. Don't worry, I'm not going to meddle. You're going to mess this up all on your own. I doubt it. Just accept that you've lost. You're still alone in that house while I'm going to great height. So you really think that by marrying her, you'll become the CEO? Well, I'm very hardworking, and her father likes me. So would it be crazy for me to dream? You don't deserve to succeed under such means. Surely there's someone else that deserved this. Like who, Aurora? Oh, that would be the day before her father allowed a woman to be CEO. So you're going to be the trophy husband. You and her father are probably rotten. A couple of hours later. Why did you lie to me about your relationship with your brother? What do you mean? He told me everything about how you betrayed the family. I did no such thing. I was your friend. I thought we had each other's back. We do. That is why I'm going to ask you not to marry my brother. Why? He loves me. You can marry any guy, but do not marry him because he's not genuine. He says that you have always been jealous of him. Me with me, and I'll explain. Okay. A couple of hours later. I heard all that you said, and it does not sound like him, so I'm going to marry him. I tried to help you, so please believe me, Aurora. A couple of weeks later. Hey, I just wanted to say that you can cancel the lease any time you want. Why are you letting us go that easily? 
I thought you enjoyed being a landlady. I don't want to be associated with you guys any more. Once you leave the house, then there is no more relationship between us. What about the penalty? No need for that. I accept the defeat. I cannot save the people who do not want to be saved. We will always win. I'm glad that you accept that. Well, while I'm not going to be the person to expose you, just know that one day it will all blow up in your face. Even if it does, you will still be that poor ugly girl that I let stay with me. I should have given you up for adoption. I wish that you had. At least I wouldn't have to grow up with your addiction. Do not think that losing you will hurt me. I still have Ariel, who is beautiful and much better than you. Okay, good for you. You can move out at the end of the month. That lines up perfectly. I'm sure that our new daughter-in-law would not mind us moving into her mansion. As for the house, I like to transfer it to you, so you can finally shut up about the inheritance money. I have no problem doing that. It will mean that we're even. Okay, we'll talk to my lawyers. We can meet later in the week and finalize business. The day of the wedding. Have you moved out your stuff? We'll need a day after the wedding to move the stuff out, and then we'll leave. Good. I hope that you left the place in good condition. I think that we're even now. Good. Now you can leave my love life alone. Yes, I will. It is yours to lose. I won't lose it. I got the jackpot, and I think I'm the winner in this case. Don't you think? Pride always comes before the fall. In this case, it is the rise. We're about to rise to another level that I hadn't even imagined before. While you'll be left in the dust. Later that day. I thought you said you were going to leave my love life alone. Yes, I did. Then why the hell did she dump me? Ah, she investigated. She is much smarter than I thought. What do you mean by that? I told her everything a month ago, and she did not believe it. But then I guess she got very suspicious over the course of the month. Let me guess, you did not stop seeing Dora. Oh, why the hell did you speak to her? She's my friend. And I did not like the way you were using her. So you decided to mess everything up. Now she's dumped me in front of everyone and called me a liar. Now what the hell am I supposed to do? You were supposed to be packing all your clothes because you have to be out of my house by tomorrow. No way. Oh yes. The next morning, have you finally managed to move all of your stuff out? I'm sorry, but we need one more day. Okay, I can grant you one more day. I'm not cruel. So you had it all planned out? Of course I did. After you accepted the relationship, even though I was sure that you wouldn't, I decided to come up with another way to save Aurora from you and your son's greediness. We're not greedy. We just wanted a better life. You already had a good life, Mom. You just got greedy. That was all your brother's fault. He was juggling too many things at once. He should have stopped things with that Dora girl. Yes, it is his fault, but it is your fault too. What do you mean? He doesn't know how to form a healthy relationship because his mother was always juggling different men. We do not speak about the past. You might not want to speak about it, but it is true. Just leave me alone. You won, okay? You outsmarted us. Okay, I'll consider myself motherless. But we are your family. You told me to leave you alone, so I shall do so. Be out of my house by tomorrow, or else I'll have to call security to escort you out. You wouldn't do that to us. Oh, but I would. We are no longer family. You chose Charlie over me, and that hurt. So live with it. Wow, you are cruel. I learned it from the best. You, Ariel, is now staying with me while my mother and brother are staying in a dingy flat on the bad side of town. Due to what he did, his reputation is tarnished. So my brother cannot get a decent job at any company. He now has a very low-paying job. Aurora and I are still very good friends. In fact, she has just been announced T.O. of her father's company. Should I have given my mom and my brother a second chance, or do they rightfully deserve the harsh fate they got? Evelyn, when will you be back home? Come back home immediately. Hold on, what's going on, Mom? I'm at the supermarket. I urgently need you back home now. Your grandma keeps calling me to take her for a walk. Could you come back home and do it for me? Hurry up before she pushes her wheelchair out. But I'm almost at the supermarket. I don't want to go back. Just take her out for a walk and then return for shopping. Can't you handle it yourself? It's not that difficult. Why should I be the one to do it? But Grandma wants to go out immediately. 
Can't you at least help her? No, why would I do that? Because she's your mother. Can't you show a bit more kindness and lend her a hand? I am being kind. She's fortunate to stay in this house instead of going to a nursing home. Don't be selfish. Come back home immediately. Come and take her for a walk. Or are you going to talk back to me? No, I'm not going to talk back. Please don't get mad. Remember who brought you up. You shouldn't go against me. Just do as I say. Yes, you raised me. But now I'm handling all the housework and taking care of Grandma. But I'm covering the costs of all the meals and everything. No, you're using Grandma's savings and pension money to pay for it. I know you're not being truthful, Mom. Um, you're really irritating me. There are things you should and shouldn't say. Learn that, young lady. No dinner for you tonight. Don't even think about taking a bite. But, Mom, I'm the one preparing dinner. That's unfair. Yes, and you still won't get to eat it because you're being so insolent. You've become quite a stubborn child since you turned 14. Well, now that I'm old enough to think for myself, I have been realizing how much you've lied to me. And you never help Grandma or me in any way. You just focus on your own matters and don't care about us. I'm looking after your grandma while you're at school. How could you know that? Can you see how ungrateful you are? No, you hire a caretaker to come in while I'm at school. You're not truly taking care of her. And who has to call and arrange for the caretaker to come? It's me. She's yelling at me again. She asked me to take her out. She won't stop. Come back home immediately, Evelyn. I told her to be quiet, but she just kept calling me. So frustrating. I'm trying to hurry, but I need to get the groceries first. Otherwise, we won't have anything for dinner. I'll be back right after I finish shopping. So can you please help me with that? Oh, no. It's all right. I just gave her sleeping pills. She was asleep in a matter of minutes. But she's asking for you to take her out for a walk. Can't you help her? No, it's fine. Her memory got worse and worse, and she would forget everything. I'm sure she won't even remember this. How can you say that? Grandma might forget things at times, but she still retains a lot of memories. What's the issue with using the sleeping pills? Many elderly people use them. I'm sure she'll be fine when you return. It's better to take her out instead of using sleeping pills, you know. Can't you respect her wishes and assist her? No, she's fine. Just go get the groceries as you said you would. Such a waste of time and energy. The next evening. Hey, Mom, are you going to eat dinner at home tonight? I'm trying to figure out how much pasta to cook. I don't know what time you'll be back. Oh, I won't need dinner. I'll be back around midnight or maybe in the morning. Okay. I've already given a bath to Grandma. The caretaker helped me even though it was already time for her to leave. She's really nice. She also shared some advice about Grandma, which I'll tell you later. You've already heard advice from her, so why bother telling me? I don't need to know any advice. But she showed me a really helpful way of holding Grandma up. I think you should know too, just in case. I won't be doing it. It suffices that you know how to do it. All right. I have a favor to ask you, Mom. Is it okay if I talk to you about it now? What's up? I won't be able to give you any money if that's what you're going to ask me. I might need a small amount, but not a significant sum. I promise. This Saturday, I will go on a picnic with my class. My friends are planning to participate, and I'd like to join them. Can you please give me some money for the picnic? What? No way. Who will take care of your grandmother on Saturday? You're the only one available to look after her, so going out is not an option. Forget about the picnic. You will be staying at home. It'll only be for a half day, so please. Can I go? No, you're not allowed to go. You have to stay at home and look after Grandma. But I really want to hang out with my friends and enjoy some time with them. You have a responsibility to fulfill. Leaving your Grandma alone at home isn't acceptable. Don't you care for your grandma's well-being? 
That's why I'm begging you to look after her in my place. Is that too much to ask for a favor? I really enjoy spending time with my friends, and I want to go out with them. I'll return home straight after school every day, and I'll be available to care for Grandma whenever you need to go out, so please. Can I go out just this once? I won't request permission to go out again for a long time. So please, quit being so stubborn. I already said no. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Plus, I won't be giving you any money for such a wasteful outing, especially when it means leaving your grandma alone. Don't cause trouble just because you want to have fun. But I'm consistently looking after Grandma. Can't we switch roles once in a while? You can go out with your friends for drinks without asking if I'm okay taking care of Grandma. You can go whenever you want. I'll pay you back when I find a job and start working. So, can I borrow around thirty dollars from you? No, I won't let you borrow any money. And you're not allowed to get a job until Grandma passes away. She still relies on you. I'm a busy adult. You're just a kid. I need to go out and unwind, releasing the stress that comes with raising you and taking care of your grandma. I don't have as much spare time as you do, so I need my free time more than you do. Honestly, I feel a lot busier than you are. You never do the housework or take care of grandma. Stop irritating me. You've been quite bothersome lately. You need to learn when to stop talking. I'm simply pointing out that you don't help me with the housework. I'm not trying to annoy you. You should be grateful that I've raised you this far. I could have placed you in an orphanage, but I didn't. I did my best to raise you on my own. Taking care of your grandmother and helping out around the house is the least you can do in return. By the way, I'd like you to leave the house after Grandma passes away. I don't want to take care of an annoying teenager. What? You're asking me to leave the house after Grandma dies? Are you serious? Go out on your own and take care of everything. Since you say you do it, everything. You're already fourteen years old. You can find a job and earn your own money. You could live on your own, right? Since you claim I'm not doing anything, you don't need me anymore. That's not what I meant. I can't believe you genuinely want me out of the house. You really don't want me around. Is that it? It's due to your obstinate and self-centered behavior. Who would want to live with such a person? Or do you still feel comfortable living at home? Or are you considering independence? All right, I understand. I'll strive to be more self-reliant. It's not like I was getting any support from you, anyways. I manage the household, and I'm aware that Grandma's savings help with our expenses. I feel like we've been drifting apart in our parent-child relationship. I will move out after Grandma passes away to find my own path. Fantastic! That will be one less worry for me. I've done my best to raise you since your father's death, and I hope you can see that. But it didn't pay off. You've really grown into quite a stubborn and selfish person. It seems like you aren't grateful for anything I've done for you. Don't expect sympathy from me once you decide to leave home. I won't. I'll never turn to you for help or anything. So you believe you can manage on your own, huh? Well then, prove it. I'm eager to witness you coming to me in tears, asking for help. You should hope your grandma stays healthy for as long as possible. Two months later, Grandma passed away. Mom, I tidied up Grandma's room. I threw everything away, just like you told me. Good. Your work here is finished. Feel free to leave whenever you want. You must be thrilled now. You're free to do whatever you want. You don't have to be stuck with her anymore. How can you say that? Aren't you grieving for your mother's death? Of course I am. She was my mother. But you went out drinking with your friends right after the funeral. Well, I needed to go out and lift my spirits. You'll understand when you're older and start drinking. That's simply how adults relieve stress. That's how you are all the time. You love joining the party all the time. Anyway, have you packed your belongings? Are you prepared to leave the house? Don't tell me you've forgotten the promise you made. No, I remember. You told me to leave the house as soon as Grandma has passed away. 
Yes, exactly. Make sure to leave by the time I return home. Got it? I don't want to see your face or any of your belongings scattered around the house. Sure. You won't see me here when you come back. Nor will any of my belongings be there. So you're determined. I'm relieved you're not reneging on your word. I thought I might have to physically escort you from the house if you were going to plead with me to stay. Yeah, right. As if I had any desire to remain there longer now that the only person I cared for was gone. I won't be relying on you any more. So, do you have alternate accommodations? Or are you going to live outdoors? Don't become homeless and burden others. But I suppose it's fine as long as you don't find me to help. No, I won't be sleeping on the streets. I'm heading to Grandma's. What? Grandma's house? Have you lost your mind? Or are you struggling to accept her passing? What do you actually plan to do? You're not contemplating ending your life, are you? No, I'm not. Or do you mean your grandma from your dad's side? Grandma Laura? Yes, Mom. Since when have you been in touch with her? You haven't really met her before, have you? Several months ago, when I entered high school, she sent me a letter congratulating me on my fresh start. It turns out she attempted to send me letters several times before, but you consistently discarded them before I could read them. However, you stopped handling things around the house, so you didn't even notice when I received a letter from her. I've been in contact with her since then. So that's your plan. No wonder you didn't seem to worry about moving out. In the end, you're relying on someone. I'm still underage. I'm not supposed to live on my own yet. I don't think there's anything wrong with depending on someone. Yeah, sure. You're just a brat opposing me. But you're still a baby who needs to be looked after. I don't want to see you ever again. So please, don't assume you'll ever see me again. Oh, do you think I'll get all lonely and end up wanting to see you? That's not going to happen, so don't worry. I won't miss you at all. I won't be responsible for taking care of my mother or you anymore. This is incredible. I'm finally liberated. I'm glad you see it that way. I was worried you might reconsider and request me to stay. Goodbye, Mom. The next month. Ellen, what's happening? How come you're getting the entire inheritance and there's nothing left for me? Mom, I explicitly told you not to reach out to me again. Why are you messaging me? I don't care about what you told me. Hand over all the inheritance you received. I'm her daughter. I must receive all her inheritance. Not you. Did you consult a lawyer about this first? Grandma stated in her will that she left the inheritance to me, not you. But I'm her daughter. I have the right to receive the inheritance, even if it's not mentioned in the will. She specifically didn't want to leave anything to you. That's what she wrote in her will, and that's why you're not getting anything. When did she write that anyway? I had her draft the will with me. She clearly stated that she was leaving everything to me. No, Mom. Then she decided to rewrite it with me because she was disappointed and fed up with you. You got angry with her when she asked for favors. Who would believe that you helped her write her will? The will I helped her draft is legal. Yours is not. I had a lawyer present to assist in drafting the will. This will is valid. Yours is now deemed invalid. The caretaker also testified that you treated her badly. Her statements serve as evidence. Therefore, you should give up any claim to the inheritance. You knew exactly that you were entitled to the inheritance. That's why you didn't object when I asked you to vacate the house. You cunning manipulator. How dare you betray the parent who raised you? You told me to leave, so I agreed. Actually, I wasn't aware of inheriting everything at that time. She wrote the will sometime later. You manipulated her into writing the will to ensure you received the entire inheritance, didn't you? No. All I did was contact the lawyer when you weren't around so she could write a new will. Grandma anticipated that you would mistreat me even more if she died. She expressed concern about my well-being after her death and left everything she had for me. That woman! It just demonstrates how poorly you treated us. You should have treated us with more kindness. You're terrible. You're an awful child. 
I should have just sent you to an orphanage if I had known you would turn out like this. You're so ungrateful. Who's being ungrateful? You or me. After everything you did to your mother, you used up Grandma's savings and pension, yet failed to care for her. Instead, you neglected her and uttered hurtful words. Your initial kindness faded as her memory worsened, and you began talking about placing her in a nursing home. Return home immediately. I'm still your parent. I have custody over you. How come? You want me to return, don't you? You shouldn't be living apart from your mother. But you kicked me out of the house, Mom. Now you want me to return? What made you change your mind? Well, the situation has changed. You're still a minor, and it's my responsibility to take care of you. You will deceive me again. I'm not coming back to your house. Just be aware that you might face consequences with the police. I've already spoken to a child protection social worker. I disclosed everything about your actions towards me. They'll be reaching out to you soon regarding allegations of child abuse and neglect. What? You reported to a social worker? I can't believe you did that. I wish I didn't have to take these steps, Mom. I wish I had a decent mother who loves and treats me well. But I had to do this to safeguard myself and my other grandma. You forced me to shoulder the majority of grandma's care. When the caretaker was unavailable, you insisted I skip school to look after her and all the household chores were thrust upon me as well. You wouldn't even allow me to hang out with my friends while you enjoyed parties almost every night. So what? I deserve to have a break. I've faced numerous challenges, and I need a way to de-stress. What do you have to stress about? You're just a child with no genuine responsibilities. You no longer have the right to claim the role of my parent. You forced me to do everything independently since I was ten years old, Grocery shopping, preparing meals, and cleaning the house. As I entered high school, you assigned me the responsibility of caring for Grandma. However, you failed to fulfill your parental duties, so I have no intention of returning to you. It is obvious that your true motivation lies in securing the inheritance, not in genuinely wanting me back. Listen, Evelyn. Life became challenging after your dad's passing. Raising you was difficult for me. Then your grandmother started getting sick, so I had to take care of her, too. I must find a job instead of being a housewife, all while juggling the responsibilities of caring for you and managing our household. This was too much for me to handle at once. That's the reason she was initially meant to go to the nursing home. But you refused to let her leave so you could take advantage of her money. I now have supportive grandparents on Dad's side, who treat me with kindness. I've come to realize that this is the way I should have been treated. I'm satisfied to be in this better place. However, there's also a deep sadness for my past, and I can't help but wish for a better mother. However, they haven't been in your life. Do you claim they're better, even though they were absent all this time? Yes, they are better, especially since their absence was a result of you preventing them from contacting me. I have no intention of ever talking to or seeing. That's how strongly I feel, especially after spending time with my grandparents. You can't understand the loneliness I experienced while single-handedly caring for Grandma with no support from you. But you were able to live without being hungry. You live comfortably with a roof over your head. Yes, I remember it was with Grandma's money. I can't even recall the last time you went to work. You spend all the time drinking with your friends and having a party. For no reason. Evelyn, I want to become your mother again. I will not allow you to suffer in life any longer. So, please, give me another chance. You've remained unchanged, despite my repeated attempts to make you change. How can I trust that this time will be any different? Hey, I want you to understand that, even during the toughest moments, I refrained from sending you to an orphanage. Can't you see that I gave everything I could? No. I'm not coming back. I won't forget that you once told me to leave. You told me that you felt free without me, and now I share the same sentiment. Goodbye, Mom. Live your own life as you wish. Unfortunately, my mom had exhausted most of Grandma's savings without additional funds in a separate account. 
she was left in financial distress and urgently seeking employment. Despite her attempts to reach out and share her struggles with rent, I redirected her to my social worker and blocked contact with her. Meanwhile, I live comfortably with my paternal grandparents. I was warmly embraced by them. Now, I attend school regularly and have the opportunity to spend time with friends. Thanks to the inheritance left by Grandma, I can afford university once I graduate from high school. Going forward, I'm determined to live life on my terms. Have you given any more thought to inviting your mother to our wedding? I remember you were undecided about it. Certainly no. I suppose I was feeling sentimental because it was close to the 15-year mark since she left me and I was a bit lonely. I'm in a much clearer state of mind now. Are you certain? Absolutely. Why would I invite her after everything she had done to me? All she's done is cause me pain. I was just 15 when she abandoned me, and I had to live in an orphanage. Can you imagine how frightening that is for a teenager? Yes, I completely understand. I just wanted to confirm your decision. I know how much you dislike having regrets, and I want to ensure you won't regret this. It's ultimately your choice, and I'll support you 100 regardless. Sure. Then my decision is not to invite her. I don't even want to see her. Then why do you hire her into your company? I don't know. Let's chalk it up to a lapse in judgment. Besides, technically, it wasn't me hiring her. It was up to a hiring manager. I didn't realize her until a year later when I spotted her at one of our company's conferences. Technically, she doesn't even work in the same building as me, but I still dislike running into her. Then why not just terminate her employment? We don't have an acceptable reason for that. Can you imagine the legal mess that would create... She's the type of person always chasing the next paycheck without putting in the hard work. My entire childhood was filled with one get-rich-quick scheme after another. I'm surprised she hasn't figured out that it's your company and you are her boss. I go by a different name, remember? I was serious about making sure she never found me again. I don't want any connection with her whatsoever. I didn't even know she had moved back to the city until I saw her at the conference. It's surprising she didn't recognize you either. I thought mothers always had that innate ability to recognize their children or something. Before a mother can even recognize her child, she must care for them. I suppose you're right. Was she really that neglectful? Didn't she care enough to memorize your face? Yeah, something like that. She was too absorbed in her latest romantic interest or get rich quick scheme. Never had the time to care about me. Honestly, I probably ended up better off without her in my life from the age of 15 onward. Well... At least it adds an inspirational touch to your autobiography. I can't believe you're making jokes when I'm going through a serious situation. Are you really in a crisis? That doesn't sound like my girlfriend. I suppose you're right. I'm not that overwhelmed. But when it comes to my mother, I'm too dramatic. I can't even begin to describe the things she did. Why did she even leave in the first place? I told her I needed stability in my life and that the environment she gave me wasn't conducive to my growth. I called her out on everything she was doing, like scamming people out of thousands of dollars, although it didn't make any difference. I have no idea where the money went. Anyway, she didn't appreciate being responsible, so the next day she vanished. She packed all her things and left a letter saying she didn't want me burdening her. She even mentioned that I wasn't worth much money anyway. That's harsh. It's unimaginable that a mother could say such hurtful things to her child. I'm truly sorry you went through that. Saying sorry now can't change anything. I've been to therapy and worked through most of the emotions related to her. But that doesn't mean I want her back in my life. Not in my company, and certainly not at my wedding. I've been enjoying a happy life without her. Indeed you have. I mean, who our age manages a company as expansive as yours? A lot of people, but I get what you mean. I don't know. Even your talented friends don't have multiple locations for their companies in five different states. Yeah, I suppose you're right. And your mother doesn't really need to reach out to you, right? She's just responsible for outreach, isn't she? Yes, but occasionally she has to call my office to get a quote for her blog posts. Wait, so she actually talks to you on the phone and she doesn't recognize your voice? No, I haven't spoken to her. I just wrote down the information and my secretary responds on my behalf. I think that she wouldn't recognize me even by my voice. She saw me speak at that conference and didn't recognize me, not that she was paying attention. Isn't that reason enough to fire her? No, I don't want to provide her with grounds to sue the company. She might claim ageism or something. So you're caught between a rock and a hard place, right? Exactly. And there's no clear way out of it, so she won't be coming to the wedding. 
I'll just have to tolerate her working in my company, even though she operates from a distance. But she still has your number. No, she only has my secretary's number. Your secretary's number is essentially your number. I know, I know, but it gives me a sense of security. I feel that she has no direct way to contact me, and I change my last name at the earliest opportunity to protect myself. Absolutely. A last name that I'll gladly adopt when the time comes. You're quite the romantic. Thanks for being understanding. Hey, I completely get it. You've built your entire empire with your name. It would be strange to change it now, right? Plus, I'm not particularly attached to my family name or anything. I genuinely love you so much. What do you want for dinner? I just got home and can start preparing. Yum, let's do beefsteak. Okay. I'll make it. Come home soon, babe. Juliana and Rosa texting. Hey there. It's been too long since we talked to each other, hasn't it? I finally tracked down your number after so long. Wait, who's this? It's Juliana, right? My dear daughter? What the hell is that? I'll take that as a yes. It's your mom. I managed to find your number, and luckily I got it. How on earth did you get my number? Who gave it to you? This is a violation of my privacy. Oh, such big words. Well, someone sent mail to my address. Remember our old home from your childhood? Actually, I moved back there when I returned to the city. Are you in the city too? I assume so, given that someone mistakenly sent you a mail to our old place. There's some kind of check in the mail for you. And it's addressed to Juliana? Yep, Juliana White. Why would they use that name? What does that mean? Oh, nothing. I just use a slightly different name these days. You go by your given name, right? I always thought it was a terrible name. I remember seeing someone with a similar name some time ago. I can't remember who it was, but I distinctly remember finding it odd. Anyway, a newspaper or magazine sent a check to your address, accompanied by a sticky note explaining that they forgot to obtain your mailing address. The secretary guided them to an old article about your childhood, so they assumed it was your childhood home. Why would she do that? I can't believe this is happening. So, is it true that you have a secretary? How posh? When I saw the amount on the check, I was nearly floored. Who would have thought that my daughter would turn out to be so valuable? What? Did you open my mail without permission? Well, of course. Darling, I'm your mother. It's my motherly duty. And I always took that duty seriously. Not at all. Furthermore, it's illegal to read my letters without my permission. Oh, it seems like someone is getting a bit ahead of themselves. I'm your mother, dear. This really isn't the way to speak to me. I understand that we had a disagreement a while ago, but I'm ready to move past that. I hope you can do the same. Isn't it about time we got back in touch? Never. Why are you behaving like this? I expected you to grow out of these childish ways, especially given your financial success. Are you employed by the magazine or newspaper? You've always been a little nosy, Juliana. So I can imagine you working as a journalist. No, I'm not a journalist. Whatever I do for a living is none of your business, and you had no right to open my mail. What's your issue? I'm doing something positive. Yeah, well, I find that hard to believe. I'm also skeptical that you genuinely want to reconnect out of kindness. And what exactly does that imply? It means you've always prioritized money. You always have and always will. I've never placed money above my own daughter. Insinuating otherwise is insulting. You're breaking my heart, sweetheart. Why would you speak to your poor mother like this? All I want is to reconnect and live with you. That's precisely what I've been doing for the past 15 years, living on my own. I don't need you entering my life and disrupting it. You've always prioritized money, even with my dolls. You believed they might be valuable collectibles, so you gathered them all and tried to sell them. But I never actually sold them, did I? I always returned them. Only because you couldn't fetch thousands of dollars for them, as you had anticipated, because they were actually children's toys. Well... You should have realized their true value and not played so roughly with them or taken them out of the packaging. 
You bought them for me at a second-hand store. How was I supposed to know they were collectibles? I was only six years old at that time. See, you can't even tell a story accurately. How am I supposed to be this heartless monster of a mother if I bought you toys? It's like the basic minimum. That doesn't make you a good mother. Just a mother. Not that you were even that great. Okay, that's enough. I'm willing to overlook all this arguing to reconnect with you, my daughter. It's been too long. Let's put the past aside. You don't get to dictate what I should do. You sound like such a brat. Therefore, it's hard to think you're successful. See? You're reverting to your old ways already. Nonsense. I didn't mean it in a negative way. I meant it to be humorous. I ain't even you. Now, if you know what's good for you, lose my number. Why should I do that? I don't care. Lose my number. Jared texting Juliana. Hey, Jared. I need to get a new phone. Can you grab one for me when you're on your way home today? Wait. Why do you need a new one? Something terrible happened to me today. Oh, no. Are you okay? Where are you right now? Physically, I'm fine. But emotionally, I'm devastated. What happened? Why do I have to get you a new phone? Because my mother got hold of my number. What? Is that true? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. She didn't realize it was you. Does she know she works in your company now? I don't think so. But due to some mix-ups, my mother now has my mail. What do you mean by that? Remember that major editorial project I'm working on for that famous magazine? Yes, I do. Exactly. They sent my entire payment to my childhood home. What? Why would they act in that way? It seems they asked my secretary, and there was likely a mistake on her part. She inadvertently directed them to an article about my childhood, which includes my childhood address. And they assumed you still lived there. That seems to be the case. It's unbelievable that your mother got hold of your number. Not just my phone number, but she also has the check. I bet she tried to cash it herself, but then she realized that she couldn't. That's probably why she reached out to me. She claimed she wanted to reconnect since it's been a while, but I turned it down. The moment she saw how much I earned from the magazine interview, she likely saw me as her next source of income. That's incredibly messed up. Okay. I'll definitely get you a new phone. By the way, she doesn't know you're her boss. No, apparently not. They also used my old name on the check, probably because of that article. Wow, that's insane. I've never heard of such a major mix-up. Wait, she also has your check. Shouldn't you text her to get it back? And what? She'll turn into a lunch date or something. She'll act all nice and everything and will basically force me to be nice back to her. Then just ask her to mail the check. And give her my new address. Or let her know I'm her boss. No way. I don't know what to do. This is such a big mess. Do you want me to go with you? You will be more confident when you have me beside you? No. She's manipulative. She'll be talking to me. Oh, we should invite her to the wedding, and she'll somehow persuade you that she's a really great person. I don't think she can convince me, based on what you've told me. Don't underestimate her. I've seen her sweet talk her way into hundreds of dollars from clients. Then I have no idea what to do. I can simply leave without the cash. Not that we require it. Yeah, but it's about the principle of the thing. Don't let your mother scare you into not taking what's rightfully yours. I know, I know. I should just confront her. Typically, I would... However, she contacted me unexpectedly. Really, I really believe that we would never speak to each other again. Apart from the fact that we unintentionally employed her to work for my company, you know. Maybe it's time to make a final stand, so to speak. And how do I do that? Firstly, you text her. Don't let her dictate how you should feel or think about being in contact with her again. Then politely provide her with the address to your company mailbox and leave it at that. I'm not sure if we can just leave it at that. Well, maybe it's time to let her go from the company. But technically, you're still paying her that way. As you mentioned at the conference, she was just using her phone. Maybe you should reach out to her supervisor and assess her performance. If she was willing to be using her phone in front of the CO, she might not be the right fit for the job. You're really smart. Thank you so much for your great idea. Yep. Don't let her walk over you like this. You're right. Love you. Love you, too. Juliana and Rosa texting. Hey, I realize we got off to a rocky start. I'm not here to apologize, but I need to express my opinion. After that, we can go our separate ways. Seriously? 
Are you still holding on to the past so tightly that you won't give your mother a chance? I just want to reestablish a connection with my daughter. Fine. If that's the case, explain why. What the hell are you saying? Why the sudden desire to reconnect and why did it take you this long to reach out? I already mentioned it. I recently came across your number from a check. Yeah, but you could have found it a long time ago back when I was still known as Juliana White. You're not using Juliana White anymore. What's wrong with our family name? The one I gave you. You abandoned me? How could you say that? What else am I supposed to call it? You disowned me. You explicitly stated in that hurtful letter that I wasn't your daughter anymore. To be honest, I didn't intend it. Then why did you write it? Because I had a daughter who didn't bring in any money. Now I can see that I was completely mistaken, and you're worth much more than I can imagine. You just admitted that the sole reason you want to reconnect is that I'm earning a lot of money now. I only have value to you because of my success. Mothers should value their children unconditionally from the beginning, not based on their achievements or financial status. That's the root of our initial conflict because I wouldn't go along with your schemes. Well, it was a good idea. Panhandlers make more money when there's a kid with them. I could have easily made three hundred dollars per day if you had just tagged along. You're the one who doesn't care about the family. I can't believe that's what you care about. That's why you're upset because I didn't want to participate in your schemes. Do you know what? I did what I had to do to put food on our table. There was hardly any food on our table. You brought in thousands some weeks, but it always disappeared mysteriously. Everyone knows you have to try your luck at the slot machines. It would be reckless not to take the chance to win big. I could have set us up for life. So that's where the money went. That explains a lot. Can't you just be quiet? I'm trying to reconnect with you, but your big mouth makes it difficult for me to love you. See, that's the problem. Please, I didn't mean it. I'm tired of fighting. I found your number, and I'm genuinely trying to reconnect after all these years. You could have done this much sooner. Just admit it. Let's stop this argument. It took me several years to find your phone number. I'm glad I found you. I love you. I'm your mother. You should be happy. And now we should reconcile. It was all a huge misunderstanding. No misunderstanding. You disowned me fifteen years ago, and you had my number all along. Huh? You're still arguing? Let's move through the past. We could be happy. We can be a family again. I already have a family. An incredible husband who loves and supports me. I also run a company that generates hundreds of millions annually, and you're likely familiar with it because you work for me. What? I work for you. Yeah, I own the company you work for. You have my secretary's number. Remember those quotes you needed from the CEO? That was me. No way. You must be joking. I wish I were. Well, this could be an opportunity to turn it into a family business. Not a chance. I contacted your supervisor, and it turns out you've been dragging down the revenue this quarter. No, she's lying. And not only that, but money has been disappearing under your watch. What? That's absurd. Besides, you can't prove anything. Actually, we can. We have security cameras. Remember? You can't say anything, dear. Please, you're my daughter. I don't owe you anything, especially after you stole money from our company. Please. Or else I'll sue. Will you sue me for your embezzlement from my company? I'll claim that you're an ageist or something. I can figure it out. You're unbelievable. Are you willing to betray me to save yourself after expressing a desperate desire to reconnect? Well, I'm clearly not getting through to you. If you mention the missing money, I'll sue you for everything you're worth. You're not in control anymore. Here's how it's going to play out, Rosa. You haven't terminated. You stole thousands of dollars from my company. What? You can't. I'm not done. You'll leave quietly, or this will reach the police. You won't find an honest job in the city because everyone will know you stole from my company. Next, mail my check to my office. Don't set foot on my company's property again, and never contact me. I have the chief of police on speed dial. You can't do this. How could you do this to your own mother? You are not my mother, not any more. And not since I was fifteen. You were just a stranger who attempted to raise me.
Our conversation is over. Goodbye, Rosa. In the end, Rosa did get arrested. She left the company quietly and was escorted off the premises by my security and chose not to pursue legal action against us. However, she did attempt to cash the check herself before I realized it hadn't been sent. The banks detected it and reached out to me since the check was originally in my name. I informed them that I didn't know her, so they did contact the authorities. Given her history of similar attempts, they decided to take her to court for fraud. As for her subsequent fate, I'm not well informed, and frankly, I don't care. I will continue manage my own company and enjoy my life with my future husband, Jared. Hey, Selena. It's been so long since we talked. How have you been? We last spoke at our high school reunion last year, if I recall correctly. Oh, hi, Evan. Yeah, it has been a while. What do you need? Why are you giving me such a cold reception? I understand that it's been a while since we last talked, but we used to have a close relationship. Why should that make a difference? What do you mean? Of course it makes a difference. You were my best friend in high school. Are you not aware of your own actions and their impact? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm referring to the events that occurred during our high school reunion. I'm referring to your actions of leaving and engaging in an affair with one of our former classmates. He had just gotten married a few weeks before. They ended up divorcing because of your inability to control yourself. Oh, that. I didn't know you knew about that. Of course I knew. Literally everyone at the reunion was talking about it. We are from a small town and we all know each other. Everyone knew what was going on within the hour. I didn't realize I was so famous. Only for being a homewrecker. I'm not sure that that's something to be proud of. Maybe, maybe not. But at least people are talking about me. But anyways, that doesn't really matter. Me and him broke up a long time ago, so there's nothing more to talk about on that subject. I've started seeing someone else now, and my life couldn't be better. Oh, I see. So why did you contact me? We barely spoke at the reunion. I didn't think there was anything to be said between us. Honestly, I didn't expect to ever hear from you again. Well, I'm living in Portland right now. Portland, Oregon? That's the one. And I just found out that your husband is one of the clients of the company I am working for now. Oh, I see. We didn't get a chance to talk for long, but he told me about how he was to be away from home for six months for work. Yeah. I think he's scheduled to be there until around September. He said that he got the assignment because his manager took a liking to him. That's one way to put what happened. Why didn't you come with him? I can't imagine being away from someone I love for that long. You don't have any kids yet, right? No, we do not have kids, but it just wasn't going to work out. It would have been a major blow to my career to be away for so long. You could have just quit working. Then you would have been able to come to Portland with him. It wasn't that simple. A lot of factors went into the decision for me to stay here. For one, we just started a major project at my job a week ago. I'm taking the lead in this particular project, so it would have been a major setback to abandon it. And even if I could hand the reins to someone else, I didn't want to leave my coworker shorthanded in the middle of something important. Oh, really? I didn't think your career was so important to you. But I guess the decision has been made, so it doesn't matter either way now. Hey, I'm sorry, but I have to go. A client is calling me. I'll text you later if that's all right. No problem. Talk to you again soon. Hey, Selena. How have you been lately? Fine. What is it? Another cold reception. Do you always greet people like that? Why would I be happy to get a message from someone like you? Someone like me? What did I do? 
I know you, Evan. You always have an ulterior motive when you contact anyone. So what do you want? Good grief. That's a really harsh thing to accuse someone of. Can't I just want to chat with a friend? Okay. What did you want to chat about? Well, as it happens, there is something that's been going on that I need to tell you about. Ben has been living with me while he is in Portland on business. Ben? As in? My husband? Yup! We have been living together for the past few months. I have no idea what to say. I know, I'm sure it's pretty surprising. You're probably pretty confused, I get it. Your husband was taken away from home by work and then someone that you used to be pretty close to stole him away from you in a romantic sense. I'm sure it's a lot to take in. But really, it's kind of your fault for making him live by himself in an unfamiliar place for so long. Of all people, I am one who understands how that feels. It's not a good feeling. I had to move to Portland because of things that weren't my fault and had to learn how to make do by myself in a new city. I understood the loneliness that he was feeling and that brought us together. Do not try to make what you are doing okay by getting poetic. Sorry, that's just who I am when I'm in love. Having an affair with a married man is nothing to brag about. Especially when the person you are talking to is that man's wife. I guess you're right. I promise I wasn't trying to brag, though. I just felt like you should know. He's away from home and feeling lonely so I built the hole that you left by not coming with him. You should be happy that he's not miserable. Is that so? You take pride in the fact that you stuck your hand into another couple's marriage. At this point, I'm starting to think cheating with married men is just a hobby to you. You're just jealous that we are madly in love. We have each other and nothing will stand in the way of us being together. I'm a little sorry for taking him from you. But with Ben's love I know I will get over it soon. Evan, did Ben not tell you? We've been divorced for several months now. What? There was a lot that happened before he left. We tried for years to make it work but there were just too many bad feelings between us. It was time to let go and both of us move on. Besides, with the way that he got put on that assignment in the first place, I really don't think it will be the last. On top of all that, it's like I was saying when we talked a few months ago. My career is important to me. And our relationship had deteriorated to such a point that there was no way I was going to give it up to chase after him. Oh, he never said anything about it. You remember when we talked about six months ago? The divorce was finalized about two weeks after that. So, when me and Ben started talking, you were already divorced? Yes. And because we have no kids and I make plans you have money on my own, there wasn't much to the divorce. It was all said and done pretty quick. Not that it really matters at this point, but there is one thing I'm curious about. When did you and Ben start seeing each other? About four months ago. When did you start living together? Almost two months ago. And the two of you never talked about his marriage or anything? I never asked. But, hang on a second. Something's not right. He gets phone calls and texts sometimes from someone that he said was his wife. And the other day, he asked me to leave our apartment until the evening because he said his wife was coming. If that's not you, then who is he talking about? Have you ever come to visit him while he's been in Portland? No, not even once. All of the divorce paperwork was handled through our attorneys. There was no reason for me to see him in person. Then why would he tell me his wife was coming to visit? Who the hell is he talking about? Maybe he got remarried? To who? If I had to guess, I would say it's probably the woman he was seeing when we divorced. What? He was seeing someone when you divorced? I told you our relationship was in shambles. 
That's another reason that we split. Ben is really not good at being faithful. He had more than one affair while we were together. Sounds like it didn't take him long to remarry and find a way to cheat on his new wife. He never learns. Wait! Do you know the person that he was cheating on you with when you divorced? My best friend sleeps with my husband or someone else's husband. I'm single. I wanted to have some leverage if you decided to make the divorce proceedings difficult, so I paid to have a full investigation done. Part of that investigation was to look into the background of the woman he was seeing. Tell me who it is. Now that I think about it, there's a chance that you know her too. Who is it? Her name is Kaylin. She's the daughter of his own manager before he left on the six-month work assignment. You said that Ben is a client of your company, right? You may have met her at some point. I'm not sure if she is a full employee at the company Ben works for, but I hear that she involves herself in business affairs sometimes. What does she look like? I don't really remember. But she is only 18 years old and mostly just does company work from time to time so her father will give her an allowance. 18? A little time has passed since the investigation, so she might be 19 by now. How did they even get involved with each other? She's so young! I believe she visited the office some when she was still in high school. That's how they originally met. When I confronted Ben about the affair, he said that he fell in love with her the first time he saw her. Father was furious when he found out. That's why he sent Ben on an extended work trip, so they would be far away from one another. It seems that that plan has not worked out like he hoped. For a while I was really bitter about the fact that he got involved with someone so young. But looking back, he was never good at being faithful. The age of the woman doesn't change that. This doesn't make sense. I thought he loved me. I think her family's money has a lot to do with his motivations as well. Despite her father's initial anger, Ben seems to be doing well financially. Some mutual friends tell me that he's always blowing money like he will never run out. So I'm pretty sure he is getting quite a bit of money from her. How could he do that? She's more than 10 years younger than him. That's disgusting. I agree. It creeps me out to even think about that relationship. But that's none of my business now. But if all this is true, then why aren't they living together? Why is he living with me? I remember something about they were having a new house built. They are probably waiting for construction to finish and then move in together. A friend of mine that works at the company told me that she is pregnant now. So I'm sure they plan on moving in together any time now. She's pregnant, too? So I hear. She's probably due sometime next month or the month after. But... What does all of this mean for me? Was he just using me for a place to live until he was ready to move in with her? Does she know about this? I find it kind of funny that you should be so upset. Didn't you message me in the first place to brag about stealing my husband from me? So you could say that the pain you are feeling now is exactly what you hoped I would feel. This is different. I don't care about you. Wow, at least you're honest, I guess. You always had the best grades in the high school and the teachers and boys loved you more than anyone else. You think you're so much better than everyone else. I always hated you so much. Evan, it's been over 10 years since we graduated high school. Whatever happened in high school is long past now. Let it go. I can't let it go. You always had everything and no one ever wanted me. It's just not fair. I love him so much. I thought it was fate that I moved to the city and then he came here for business. It was like the universe was saying we should be together. I thought I had a once-in-a-lifetime chance to be happy and get revenge on you all at once. 
Well, it looks like another woman is going to get that happiness in the end. I wish her luck trying to keep him faithful though. What should I do? I don't understand how he could do this to me. It hurts so much. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. Talking to me about it won't help. Ben and I have nothing to do with each other anymore. You're his wife first. Yes, and we divorced. If I were to put myself in the middle of his life now, it would only cause chaos for everyone. I'm not getting in the middle of this. Well, what if you just talk to him as my friend? But we're not friends. We're not. Look, Evan, it doesn't matter how you ask. There's nothing I can do for you. Please help me. I can't. Anyways, I have to go. I have a date tonight and I need to get ready. A date? You're seeing someone already? I've been single for several months now. There's nothing strange about me going on a date. By Evan. Selena. Please help me, just give me some advice. I haven't been feeling well the last few days so I took a pregnancy test. The test was positive. I didn't plan on getting pregnant. Ben has already left me to go live with her. My heart hurts so much and I don't know what to do. Kaylin came to my office yesterday and told my manager about how I was having an affair with a client. Ben's company is cancelling its contract with us. There's a rumor that the company is blaming me for the lost contract and I could be fired any day now. All of that on top of being pregnant. I really don't know what to do, Selena. I always do this to myself. Why can't I be smart like you? I had to move here because my family found out about my relationship with our old classmate. The one who was married. They cut me off and told me they didn't want to see me ever again. So I moved here to try and start a new life, but now look at me. I thought that Ben would marry me and we would have a baby and build a life together. I told him that I was pregnant and he just blew me off. He said there was no way he was going to get another divorce and start all over rebuilding his life. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to raise this child as a single mom and now I might be out of a job. What should I do? Selena, are you there? Please, Selena. You are smarter than me and I know you'll know what to do. Please give me some advice. Don't leave me all alone like this. Selena, are you there? If you were a real friend, you would help me right now. The sense of desperation conveyed in Evan's final messages made me question whether Ben would fulfill his responsibility of paying child support or if he would attempt to disregard both Evan and their child entirely. In the end, though, that didn't matter. Subsequently, a DNA test confirmed that the baby was not his biological child from the start. Despite Evan's persistent insistence that the child was his, the undeniable truth of the DNA test proved otherwise. In the face of irrefutable evidence, she finally confessed to having a one-night stand with another man. She reached out to the man she had been with that fateful night, and after some negotiation, he agreed to provide her with a one-time payment instead of ongoing child support. Following the transaction, he promptly vanished from her life. She sought refuge at her parents' place and temporarily stayed there during her pregnancy, but her stay was short-lived. After the baby was born, she immediately put him up for adoption. Her family promptly disowned her upon her return. As for Ben, things didn't conclude in an ideal manner for him either. Rumors started circulating around the company about his involvement with the manager's daughter. Some even went as far as claiming that he manipulated her into a marriage solely for her wealth. He lost the trust of everyone, and as a result, his work performance drastically declined. The company was on the brink of bankruptcy due to the turmoil caused by his relationship with Kaylin, or so I heard.